Hello and welcome everybody to the Self-Empowerment Project podcast. Today we're going to be talking about taking it easy and how we recognize the signs that we should. We have some amazing guests today like Andrea Mason. She's a daughter, a wife, mother, and who is one who is always acts with integrity. She has over two decades of experience in personal development, a BSW in social work and a major in psychology, certified as a global motivational speaker under the mentorship of Mr. Les Brown, certified small business entrepreneur, certified professional organizer, and your personal accountability coach. She's the creator and innovator of the life transformational journey called Play, Plan Life According to You. As your personal accountability coach, she does not dictate or lecture. She listens, learns, and loves. Here, you achieve personal freedom through the healing power of forgiveness with her. And she provides that bridge that a person has to walk across to get them from where they are to where they would like to go. Once you achieve personal freedom, you can achieve anything. Thank you for being here with us today, Andrea. Thank you so much, Catherine, for having me. It's an honor and privilege and privilege to be here amongst amazing women, like-minded, empowerment women. And this is what it's about, uniting and rising as opposed to conquering and dividing. It's an honor and privilege to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for that. We also have the wonderful Kim Rajmakers. She is a mom of two, a business professional of 20 plus years, and a personal development junkie turned transformation coach. Kim is helping women leaders embrace their true selves, owning their awesome power, and creating fulfilled dream lives. What began as a personal journey, she has turned into a mission to help women experience the same freedom that she has created for herself and her clients. When you're ready to take control and lead the life you were destined for, reach out to Kim to start a conversation. Thank you so much for being here today. Catherine, thank you so much. I'm really quite excited. And uh, yeah, I think Andrea said it the best <laughs> in her, her thank yous. Oh my goodness. Well, today's going to be wonderful. We're talking all about taking it easy, learning how to calm down, take that rest, because we are all very busy people. And it is important to be able to listen to ourselves and learn how to take that time for ourselves. So... Our first question for today is when is a time in your life where you hit that wall and went, oh, I need to rest? Let's start with Kim. Well, I think it's the one that it's um, as a, an entrepreneur um, and previously as a corporate um, professional, it's, it's almost like a daily balance to, to manage how you're feeling versus what needs to get done. And what I found oftentimes when you hit that wall, it's because you keep expecting yourself that you need to be doing more versus actually looking to what you've actually accomplished. So for me, that's definitely been a lesson um, to look instead of going, do I need to push more and get do more than I want to do is to look, what have I done? And I found this week, especially when we start to do something new. So this week I was hosting a workshop, which I was really excited about up until the day itself. And all of a sudden I felt exhausted. And what that was is my brain really playing a trick on me going, yeah, Kim, this is new. We don't want to do this. So let's just cancel because like, you know, you don't have energy for this. You're exhausted. And in that case, for me, the trick is to then play some music or do something that I know I, I get energy from to just check in. Is that me being really tired and do I actually have to take care of myself or is this my brain playing a trick on me because we're trying something new and something scary. But yeah, definitely the first thing I usually do is check in like, okay, have I done enough? Have I done what I wanted to do? Have I done something versus looking at what have I not accomplished? Because that's when that wall, you keep walking against that wall day in and day out if you keep looking at it from the wrong perspective. Absolutely wonderful. I love how you talk about changing perspectives so that way you can figure out where to do that. <laughs> how about you, Andrea? 
Yes, it's a it's a great question. You know, we at many, many times we suppress our emotions as women because we want to be empowered. We want to make be the nurturer of our environment. And nine times out of ten, we put ourselves last. And I recall in 2015 or 16, I had gotten to the point where I ended up, you know, getting my stuff and getting my guys out to where they needed to be. And I wasn't feeling so well. I arrived at the office and I ended up having to go to the hospital. And I didn't understand what was going on. I had difficulty breathing. They sent me to the hospital, checked me out, said nothing was wrong, and sent me on my way. That evening, later on, they called me back and said, we, we need you to come back, Audrea. We're concerned for your health. They didn't disclose anything on the phone. So I said, I have school. I have a business to take care of. Long story short, I ended up going there and I was diagnosed with myasthenia gravis. And that's a complete almost shutdown of the autoimmune and central nervous system. And little did I know, I had a pre-existing laundry list of autoimmune conditions. And what I realized was that I was not taking care of myself. See, my mother had passed in 2007 and I was just grinding and kind of dismissed the fact that that was going on and I put myself last and if you don't if you don't take care of yourself then our creator in the universe is going to pull the world under you and so fast forward I ended up on the ICU unit for a week and in doing so I remember the conversation as if it was yesterday speaking with my husband saying you need you need to come home our son needs you our family needs you it was at that moment as Kim mentioned to take a choice to make a decision, and as you mentioned, Catherine, to alternate, al to alter your perspective and realize your number one asset is your health. If you're not taking care of yourself, you're not 100% for others. And I think when we realize that we can't do everything, we're not supposed to do everything, that it takes a village to raise a child, it takes an uh, empire to be successful, that's when we need to focus on our mental health, our physical health and well-being. And that's what I encourage each and every one of you doing. When you feel like it's too much, you don't have to do any, everything all at once. Take your time, prioritize, plan, and that's when you'll be at your best. Make sure you're 100% always so you can go all in. Absolutely profound. And thank you for sharing that story with us. I know it's difficult for a lot of us to learn how to take it easy, to rest, and to recognize the signs in our own bodies before we get to that ending point where everything turns catastrophic. So Absolutely. let's, talk, so let's mm -hmm. talk about the signs that happen before you reach the train wreck. What are things that you recognize within yourselves that you know means you need to slow down. Start with Kim. So for me, I, I it's it's a couple of different things that happen. So I'm usually starting to get that feeling of being overwhelmed because I've got this long list and it doesn't matter what I've done, that list only seems to get longer rather than shorter. Um and what I've also found is really watching how my interactions are with especially my family. So when I was working, and that was one of those things I've always overworked, I always, you know, overwhelmed, overworked, over in you know, all those overs that belong to that, because I was trying so hard to do it all, like be that um, great corporate professional, be at home, be all of that together. And I could show up at work and be, you know, really um, collegial, really kind, generous, and all the things I wanted to be at home. But as soon as I got home, the tank was empty, which meant that I'd show up at home. I'd be really irritated with my family. I wouldn't have any patience. My kids would be like, okay, mommy, is everything okay? Right? Because you're just like, but you realize these are the people that you love the most and you feel the safest with them. So you don't need to put up a wall or a shield and act a different way. And yet you're hurting the people that you love the most. So for me, those are really big triggers and signs that, like, oh, okay, hold on a minute. When I'm starting to get irritated with my family or things 
um, small things that normally would not even register on my radar are all of a sudden becoming big things, then it's a really sign. Let's look inward. I need to find some time. And it really doesn't need to take a lot of time. I think that's the biggest part that people consider is part of that. I'm not sure if I'm jumping ahead on your questions, Catherine, so maybe I'll, I'll stop there. But one of those things is it doesn't take a lot of time. So I found um, sometimes just creating a little breathing exercise. And I do this with my kids too. So it's like, okay, mommy's a little bit upset. So I'm, uh, we need to calm down. So could you help me? So let's, you know, breathe in, breathe out. And then what I like about doing it with them is that I not only show them what it's like when I'm overwhelmed and that, that it's okay and that it happens, but also what do you do for the next step? Because I think there's a bit of a disconnect when, we, when we're um, working with our kids, we think, well, you always have to be good versus showing them it's okay to have big emotions, but also what do you do with them afterwards? Because while I work with, with corporate women, I'm still raising two kids and one of them's a girl, I want her to be very strong as well, but I want her to give the skills now versus, you know, in 20 years going, okay, well, honey, now you need to do this. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Kath? I'm sorry, I usually kind of go in a real circle. That's okay. It, it shows a very unique perspective on recognizes a, recognizing signs in your own life on that you should rest. And I appreciate that because a lot of folks don't talk about how it also affects your kids and that trust between everyone. So you're able to be how you really feel at home. And sometimes it's detrimental. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. You're welcome. How about you, Andrea? I think I'm going to take that, Kim. I'm going to take that exercise and apply it. I'll, I have a son and a husband, and I think I'm going to apply them. Sit them down. Okay, mommy's a little stressed right now. Let's help me out. And I think that's really key, Kim, because it it shies away from the blame game. You're asking for guidance. You're asking for support. And you're inclusive with your family members. And I think that's really key because, especially with me coming from a household of men, you know, I grew up all around all my male cousins. And we, I kind of adopted, you know, suppress your emotions you know you don't need to talk about your emotions all the time but truth be told with my mother and my aunt we would always express our emotions so when I moved to that next chapter that my inner circle was consisted of men I definitely had to adjust and you have to adapt to your audience adapt to your environment what are they used to are they going to be you know shunned by it are they going to feel that this is an attention seeking basis are you going to are they going to feel that this is an emotional breakdown or are they going to feel supportive and that's what's most important i believe ladies is, is the, the communication that you have with the environment around you that hey look i'm going through something we are human and this is what i'm feeling right now because a lot of time as women we don't want to burden other individuals we don't want to bring our baggage to the forefront or or air out our dirty laundry but at the same token we don't it's it's the amount that you share if you're feeling really upset you can say hey you know what i'm not doing all right right now i just need support i need hug i need just an ear a sounding board and i think that's definitely key and i, I like i said i i appreciate and respect what both of you are saying to really allow yourself to have self-awareness and self-discovery because the more you're in tune with that and the different perspectives the more you're able to be malleable with the other individuals and learn how to communicate not everybody understands experiences or learns the same way and we we learn that there's different perspectives different options available to us that's what's going to help us communicate and and work together Absolutely wonderful. Thank you. So the next question would be, so the next question would be, how and what constitutes rest? What do you do to allow yourself to rest other than recognizing that you need to do it? What are things that you do? 
I know there's a lot of stereotypes of, well, go, go take a bubble bath. Well, that's great. But what do you do when your mind's still racing? You're not resting, even though you're in that bath. Andrea? Yes, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, resting, I believe it's about inner peace. And, I, and for me, what I try to do, if I know that I don't have the access to a bubble bath at that time, I try to think of a song, something musical, because music is the universal language and can take you anywhere you need to be. And if you're unable to get music, even if you have five seconds, get out into fresh air, get into the elements, you know, just get, uh, you know, connected with nature so you can allow your energy and your vibration to be at homeostasis, at a balance, because we do get intertwined. We do get wrapped up into our emotions. And a lot of us have negative self-talk. We have the, you know, the negative committee always judging us from our ego, but then our heart is just like, this is how I feel. I need to express this some sort of way. And I think rest would even be, I would even go as far as if you are capable to schedule it during your day. Now, yes, we are hardworking women. We have busy schedules. We have multiple Jack Willen of trades outside of our business. But if you get ample enough hours of sleep, get consistent routine, good nutrition and positivity, even if it's just taking yourself, like you mentioned, Catherine, before, and, and Kim, allowing yourself three to five seconds of just taking a deep breath in, expanding your stomach, and then releasing it out. Even if it's just two, you know, two to three breaths, that is what inner peace is. You're gathering and getting balanced and grounded with the five senses of your surroundings just to kind of get you at ease. That would be my suggestions and some of the tools and tactics that I use. Thank you. Thank you for that. How about you, Kim? Well, it, for me, it's uh, I, I like Andrew's extensive response because she gives a lot of really good advice and, and things that are definitely helpful. It really depends on the level that I need the rest at. So if, if this is just something that you know, I've had a bad night's sleep and I could feel that you're, so I'm a person that likes eight hours of sleep with two young kids that does not happen very often. <laughs> but in saying that there are moments you recognize, all right, hold on a second. This is something that can be solved either by getting some extra sleep or taking a moment. Um, now, I like how you mentioned the bubble bath because so many of the women I talk to are like, well, you know, I'm all into self-care. And when you start asking, well, what do you do? Well, you know, I go have a glass of wine. I'll take a nice bath and maybe I'll read a book. And then that's a really great surface level things to be doing. But if you really want to get into rest and where I have found, um, so I'm a bit of a workaholic, I have found. Um, I, I, I love usually I love what I do. So I tend to keep keep going. But because of that, I feel like I have this image of myself being the energizer bunny and then realizing, hold on a second, that battery doesn't just get swapped in and out whenever I need a new new bit of energy. That there's times where I've really pushed it too far, where sleep isn't what's going to help me. So even things like I've had uh, times, and we just moved last, well, almost a year ago, last November, from Canada to the Netherlands. So this was in the middle of a pandemic, not the most stress-free experience. Moving is never stress-free, but that definitely took it to another level. And I realized because I was working full time on top of that, I burnt myself almost out by the time I hit Christmas. And I could, I could barely get out of bed in the morning. So I was so exhausted, even though I had slept all night, that I really had to take a step back and look, what is the absolute necessity of things that I have to get done? And the rest I just put aside. And then it becomes the for me the true rest. And this is what I work with my clients with, is just like finding things that you can start changing some of the stories that you're telling yourself around. What do you need to have accomplished? How does it need to look? All the expectations that people have about what I should be doing and how I should be doing it to let those things go. Because then that mind chatter starts to slow down. And as I can start creating small little habits that I can build on over time, I'm going to build in that rest 
a lot more. And that's where I feel when we're talking about truly about self-care and mostly it leads into the self-love for yourself. When you've taken care of yourself, you can take care of other people. And there's a number of different ways you can do it in a small little way. So I've had times where I don't necessarily need rest, but I'm feeling my anxiety level coming up. And that's also a sign like, okay, we need to slow down somewhere. Find things that work for you. Like Andrew mentioned, play a song. I, I like a cup of tea because the cup of tea, I can smell it. I get to taste it. I can feel the heat. And I have so many memories of sitting you know, with my parents, sitting with friends over a cup of tea that that those experiences from the past remind my body to relax and just take a, a breath and, and take some time. So there's lots of ways to go. Out and like where I started, is it depends on where I am and where my clients are in terms of the scale of what do you want to do? Like, is it just a matter of get a couple of extra good nights of sleep? Then that would be my suggestion. But if it's really longer lasting, you need to start making some big habit changes and some big story changes as you call them what's going on in your mind in order to truly get the rest that you're looking for so true absolutely true if we can't change how we think about a situation in our mind then we'll always be telling the same narrative and i really appreciate that insight so right now when it comes to taking it easy what are some other thoughts that y'all have Andrea? Some of the thoughts that I have to taking it easy brings me back to, am I going to be prepared enough, as Kim has mentioned, to take care of my family? Am I going to be prepared enough to be a service to others? And taking it easy, I just have to say, you know what? I can't do everything all at once. And I like what Kim and I, I parallel that when I when I when I press play with individuals is plan life according to you. Allow yourself to develop a strategy, a technique. Those habitual rituals are very important. And again, going into the five senses of really understanding what makes me happy and really understanding and putting in perspective what are the musts, the shoulds, the haves the woods that I want to do, and what are the wants? Because when we allow ourselves to prioritize and plan and really see what we want for ourselves, we have more energy to work towards those. But we still have our must, shoulds, woods, and, and needs to do as our goals, as far as our contribution to our family, to our business, and most importantly, ourselves. And some of the thoughts, again, that go through my mind is, am I giving 100% right now? You know, I, I truly don't believe in giving a certain amount, a, a portion of, of a percent, because I wouldn't want that on the other end as a recipient. I want you all there. I want complete attention and focus so we can work effectively and collaboratively and so we can be at our best selves to help one another. So I do kind of a mindset perspective and self-awareness check before I enter into anything because I want to make sure I'm at my best because it's not only fair to me, but it's not fair to the recipient that I'm helping or providing for. So the three thoughts that really go into my mind is, let me first prioritize and plan what I need to take care of, the perspective, the vision. Then I ask myself for an assessment. Do I have what it takes? Is my energy, vibration, and mindset intact? And then thirdly, if I am all ready, I just need to take a step back, be patient with myself, and allow production to, to follow through. And those are some of the thoughts that I have. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you for taking us through that thought process. I know that's going to help a lot of people. You're welcome. Thank you. How about you, Kim? What are some thoughts you have about taking it easy that we haven't touched on yet today? Okay, let me just ask a, a reverse question here. Okay, Catherine, are you meaning the thoughts that I have that go through my head and are like, oh, I need to take it easy or just uh, to what kind of process that we can work towards to take it easy? Any, all, either. 
Um, this is about uh, the communication and connection. So if you have something you want to talk about that's under this umbrella, talk about it. No, that's fine. I just want to check in because I, you can take it two prongs. So I really liked Andrea's process that she shared. Um, usually when if I, the way I interpret your question, it was like, what thoughts do I have? But usually it's like, holy, I thought way too much to do. And then I get into this rabbit hole of circling. It's like a vicious circle that just keeps feeding itself. And it's really hard to break. You need to break some patterns. So that means finding something else to do. So I know I used my, my kids as an example in the beginning, and I use them often simply because if you look at children, they're, they're not born with all the stories that, they're, that, that we carry. They're not born thinking they're not good enough. They're not born thinking, hey, you know what? I need to do more. They're simply born. If they're tired, they sleep. If they want food, they eat. And in this continues probably for a good, well, I'll say up till school, because once we get to school, then it's a lot more regulated. Now it's time to eat. Now it's time to do this, et cetera. And so when I look at them, it's like, well, man, you know, they'll, they'll say to me, mom, you've done so much work today. It's like, what? Are you, are you sure? <laughs> right? You're trying to like justify or validate what I've done based off of a five-year-old's opinion I'm like wait a second this is this is this has gone the wrong way but I think it gives a really good again getting back to perspective of what perspective are you taking we put such a high level of expectation on ourselves and what happens too often is we have a over um, exaggerated expectation of what we can do and an under um, rated expectation or yeah, expectation of what we accomplish. So we think we're going to get this much done. And then we get, we think we've only got this much done. Well, it should be the other way around. We should be weighing up what we've done much more than versus what we expected. And I like Andrew's process there about, um, you know, that checking and am I giving 100% because I think that's really important. I would, the one thing that came up for me is that there's a trap on the other side of that is not to get stuck in the trap of like, it needs to be 100% perfect in order for me to give my 100%. I think there's, um, I'm, I call myself a recovering perfectionist because I always wanted to do things perfectly, which really was a downside when you're trying to take things easy. And that's for me still a struggle that I found that when I'm trying to get things doing really perfectly, that's a sign like, hold on a minute, I need to stop, I need to slow down and look at what am I doing? Because 70 or 80% of the way done or knowing 70 or 80% of the information can be enough to move forward. And I'm still giving my 100%. And then on the last 20 to 30%, I'm going to trust that I can figure it out along the way. And I think there's that, uh, I just wanted to add that distinction when, and when Andrew's mentioned that, because I'm like, well, hold on a second. Do I give, I asked myself that question. Am I giving a hundred percent? It's like, well, sometimes it's like 80%. And it's like, no, I usually give a hundred percent, but it's learning to lower that perfectionist level on the other side of that, that I'm not overworking. Um, and one more thing I want to add around thoughts. And this is really where I've been working on is finding as we've grown up, like I said, as children, we start off like a completely blank slate. So we don't have all these expectations we're at right now. But as we've grown up, we've been conditioned to think in certain ways. And one of the big ones is thinking, well, if you work hard enough, you'll be successful. If you work hard enough, you'll be happy. The only thing is working harder has never guaranteed success or happiness. But it's one of the ways that we've you know, going through school, well, you know, what if you didn't get the right grade, what was usually the, the question that would remark that comes up, well, you didn't work hard enough, or you didn't study hard enough in order to get the grade that you wanted. So I think there's a lot of how we've been conditioned to think since we were from childhood into adulthood, that also needs to shift to really be able to take that and feel at peace because I know Andrew you mentioned feeling at peace when you, you you're resting but to truly feel at peace when you need to take it easy and to start much more tuning into what does your body need what does your mind need to rest because you can only show up in your best form if you are resting I think I took a couple of different topics and runs at that one Catherine 
<laughs> Go ahead, Andrew. I just saw your hand yourself. No, yes. And 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 I, I do thank you for pardon me, Catherine, but I do thank you for uh tapping into that because I should have been a little bit more clear, um, clear about that. And you're right, a hundred percent doesn't mean grind to exhaustion. I what I meant to say or what I was implying is completing the task start to finish. And I think that's what's important. You know, yes, at times we give 80% of our blood, sweat and tears, and then the 20% is experience or tactile or logistics of a situation. And I totally agree with you. You know, we are get we do get programmed or taught. And my mentor, Ms. Brown says some things are taught, some things are caught. And what I've learned and, adopt, and adopted with my business is practice is for progression. There's no such thing as perfection because we are our own worst critics. And we also are unable to swallow and absorb the negativity or the critiques of our external you know, audience or candidates or even family members. And when we are able to really absorb that and say, hey, you know what? 99% of people support me, but I've got this one person that just doesn't agree with me. We totally shift our perspective to that negative connotation. And it's like you said, Kim, it's all about our response and not our reaction. Hey, we got a winning team here that we're still you know, supporting that believes in us. So we have to be mature enough and, and go back to our childhood and start a clean slate, be civil, be respective, and say to that one individual, what drew you to that conclusion? So you can get an alternate, alternative perspective. Because like I said, everybody learns differently, has different experiences, and we don't all share the same experiences. And like you said, Kim, uh, what you had touched on, it's all about pro productivity, work, smarter, not, you know, harder, because if you're working harder and you're not finding effective ways for production, progression, growth, success, you get what Catherine mentioned at the top of the show, burnt out. And you mentioned that as well, Kim, and I've mentioned it, my, my whole body shut down. And what we have to be mindful is, yes, we're giving 100%. Yes, we must finish, start start to finish a task at hand, but at the same token, check in with ourselves all throughout to make sure that it's progressive. One of the biggest phrases we hear every day is I'm busy. And then I question, are you busy being busy or busy being productive? And that's when the perspective changes. What am I doing effectively, Kim, like you mentioned, Kim, to be, to take it to the next level? to be better than I was the day before. But again, like I mentioned, to have patience with ourselves because we are human and allow ourselves to rest, to be at peace and to learn from our experiences. What are our areas of improvement and where can we welcome the opportunities and individuals to help us in that? And what are our areas of strength so we can lean back and bring somebody up? Thank you. Truly wonderful. The both of you have so much insight. And I love that you've both talked about perfectionism and how it's really a bug. And it makes you feel like you're not doing enough when you're doing more than enough. Every single day, we work incredibly hard. And when that little bug is around us, it makes us feel like we're not doing enough. So thank you both for that. In the meantime, let's see if anyone in the live audience has any questions for us or if they'd like to say anything. And oh, it looks like we have something. It says, he says, the insight today has been fantastic. My question is, how do you take that step back, go through your personal checklist, and take the time for that relaxation when life is always asking too much of you. If you feel you don't have the time to really de-stress. This is a wonderful question. Thank you so much. 
What are y'all's thoughts on it? Do you want to go first, Andrew, or shall I? Okay. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Well, there's a couple of things in there that I would, um, Phoenix, that I would start with. Uh, one of them is also asking yourself what are the stories and the thoughts that are running through your mind? Because as you're saying, you said, well, if you feel you don't have the time to really be stressed, the question is, is it that you don't have time or is it you're choosing not to make the time? So, um, you know, as an example, uh, we all have phones, right? We, well, most of us have phones with social media. And I've done this too. I get really stressed because like, I don't have enough time to do something. And then next thing you know, I find myself on the scroll on Instagram or Facebook or wherever it is. And I'm like, well, well how did I just lose 15 minutes? So, and I think there's also this perception that in order to de-stress, you need to have so much time and it's really not, not the case. You can, you can already lower your stress levels and step into a better uh, mindset by taking a couple of deep breaths. And I wouldn't just say take two or three, but take the time to take 10, 10 deep breaths, for example. And uh, one of my favorite ways to do that is really to take what we call what's called a box breath that I, everyone calls it differently, but essentially you're going to take a breath in for about five counts. You'll hold it for five counts. You'll breathe out for five counts, hold again. And then you do that cycle for about a minute or two. And what that does is a couple of different things. One, it gets your brain because you're focused on counting. You're focused on breathing to completely lose its focus on what was causing you all that stress. And that's what you need in order to break that pattern because otherwise it's like that vicious circle I talked about before you've got these thoughts and they just keep circling and they'll keep circling and it's like a magnet they'll pull even more thoughts in and it's gonna all of a sudden gets to be a snowball effect that breathing gets that to stop the other part is your brain needs simply needs oxygen so the more oxygen you give it it's food the better that it can operate so as you're doing that, it's, you're able to just really take a minute to focus. And then once you've done that, you know, it, it's breathing, it could be something different. I've started walking around the house rubbing my fingertips because that's a tactile, you know, if you're feeling something, I've got clients that love to like, okay, put your feet on the floor, find your toes, like where, especially because if you're in a meeting, right? Like if, um, if you're in a meeting, you don't want to be rubbing your fingers or you're not like outwardly breathing. You don't want to know for everyone to know by really focusing where are my feet, can I wiggle my toes? Can I feel all my toes? You're pulling your mind away from whatever it was, the rabbit hole it was going down. You're getting back into focus and then you'll find yourself better able to make a decision about the next step because then you have that You've taken that moment of break. You fed your brain some oxygen. You're now out of that fight or flight um, sensation that your body is feeling. And you can look at that checklist and go, okay, well, what is the next best thing that I can do? Not everything, just what is the next best thing I can do? And keep them small. I think this is one other tip to give with that is people bunch things up and make it into one huge task versus, you know, to putting into small little tasks. So um, even I've done this and I've worked with, you know, with my coach and like, Oh my God, I need to have a whole lot of emails done. Well, could you start with one? Oh yeah, that's doable. I could do one. Right. But if I had to think like I have to make 10, 20 emails that does, I, 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 I'm like, oh, I don't even have the time. Where do I start? So those are at least my tips. And I'm sure Andrew's got a ton of extra as, as well for that question, but it's a great question, Phoenix. I hope we've answered it for you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Phoenix. And absolutely, Kim, you uh, hit the nail on the head as far as the scientific, the malleable, and the physical techniques that, you know, do need to happen when you have limited time. My first thing is just saying, stop and just smile. Why? Because that's going to change your vibration for everything. You know what? I'm grateful I'm here. I'm grateful that I have another opportunity. And I'm grateful that I'm trusted with these tasks at hand. And I would really take the time, Phoenix, to say, you know, if life is always asking too much, 
you have a choice. You have an opportunity and you have permission to say, no, not at this time. And it's okay. And the people that support you, the people that are by you, will respect that. Not everybody's going to accept it, but they respect it. Because again, going back to what I had mentioned before, unless you're at good health, good mindset, and at your best, that's when you're able to take on things and ask yourself and your reflection, why am I saying yes to everything? Why am I doing everything? And this was something that I had to learn a long time ago. I don't need to do everything. And I know the moms out there, the women out there, even the individuals and men out there, you are asked to do something. And when you muster up the courage to say, I'm going to delegate this. I don't need to take all of this on right now. I'm going to take Kim's advice and prioritize and cut it up into small slices. But at the same token, what? why is everybody coming to me? Do I have the strength? Do I have the ability to let them know, hey, can't do it right now. Take care of it. But if you need help later, maybe. Because what I'm seeing, Phoenix, is you are just like the three of us here at one point of our lives. Yes, I got you. I got this. Yes, I'm the go-getter. Yes, I'm the one who shows up. Yes, I'm the one who takes care of everything. Look at life. What is it asking you? And why is it always asking you? And if it's a gift and you're grateful and again, up to the challenge, like I said, our creator wouldn't give us something we couldn't handle and whatever we can't handle, our creator takes care of. And if you're always saying yes, start by saying yes to you first. Take care of you first. Take care of your mental health well-being, your pers personal well-being, physical, emotional, spiritual. And then when you do so, it's okay to say no. It's okay. You have that permission. You have that choice and right. Respectfully, civilly, and if you are a court, you can say no. Don't be hard on yourself. Be patient, prioritize, plan, and most importantly, be at peace. I hope that's helped. absolutely wonderful advice from the both of you thank you so much and it looks like they've sent over a little heart so their question has been answered that's what we are here all about on the self-empowerment project helping each other grow to be better thank you so much you both for your time today for your insight, for your love, for your compassionate honesty. These are all the things that make us great. Do either of you have any closing thoughts? Absolutely, you know, and then like just to, to Phoenix to kind of wrap up the latter part of the question, if you really feel you don't have the time to really distress, that is something to kind of, reflect upon to assess where are you like has mentioned before in this segment where are you dispersing your time where is your time going are you you know I led a life of people pleasing I always had to take care of everybody I always wanted to, to heal somebody I wanted to help somebody but there's a time in the moment where you spread yourself thin and just to kind of leave you with this, you know, through the toughest times, miracles are made. Follow your heart and not the hurt. Through our life's trials and tribulations, trials can be won. And when you take the pen in your own hand and start writing your story, allow yourself in this crazy game of life to press play, plan life according to you. For our story is told to us, when we are younger, but at one point in your life, 
you must take the pen and write your own story. Be well, Phoenix. Ladies, it's been an honor and privilege. Thank you so much for having me today. Yes, appreciate it. Truly wonderful. Thank you. So now we're getting to the end of the show. Where can folks find you? Let's start with Kim. Yeah, can I, I, I want to just intercede a little bit on that last question as well. Like Catherine, and I'll, I'll then get to where they can find me. I think one of the best things that I've learned um, is that by really learning how your mind works and changing your mind is actually the best and most effective way to get the life that you want to have. It's not about the bath. And yes, I, I know we talked about this. The bath is fantastic. It's a really great thing to also calm your central nervous system in that moment in time. But for a long-term solutions, the best way to create the life that you're wanting to have that life that is not full of stress, but that's not asking too much of you, Phoenix, to get back to your question as well, but it's really learning how can I change my mind the way that it works and can I become in control of my mind versus it controlling me at that time at that time so I just wanted to add that quickly in there before we, we ended Catherine but for me yeah I I hang out on a LinkedIn and a Facebook and Instagram a little bit more on Instagram these days but if you just went to my um uh, is kimreimachers.com and I'm really hoping you've got links in your show notes Catherine because people to spell my last name is a little bit scary but kimreimachers.com and that'll right for right now that'll take you straight to my Facebook group and um in time I'm building a website that'll all bring up all the information there as well so if you're watch this a little bit later or listen to it later and yeah just just reach out and and I'm always open for a conversation. I think every good relationship starts with a conversation. And if you've ever got questions, just reach out and ask. And thank you so much, Catherine, for the opportunity. Absolutely. Thank you for those thoughts and for letting us know where we can find you. How about you, Andrea? Yes. So I can be found at andreamasons.com, Andrea Mason Facebook. LinkedIn and am.andreamason on Instagram. And I'd love for everyone at this opportunity, you know, to reach out and, you know, grab their cell phones and type in am.pressplay for your complimentary session. And I totally agree with Kim. It starts with a connection. A connection will lead to progression, which will lead to success. And I'm open and welcome to always connect with individuals for it's, it's, not every day that someone is ready to be a sounding board or or hear what you have to say because it's important we all want to say hi how are you doing for our own benefit and courtesy but I open the door to see how you really are doing and I'd love to bridge that success from where you are to where you need to be so again Catherine and Kim a pleasure sharing this platform thank you so much for having me. absolutely today has been wonderful Thank you both so much. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do next. Thank you so much for having us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you.